my first guitar track. Real simple. Okay, so here we go. Let's just go ahead and play it on the downbeats of each of these chords like I did. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, or you can use open strings like this. Okay, that's nice too. Or fretted chords like this. Okay, here comes the third ending. Here we go. It's going to happen again. Okay, here comes the A flat chord. Okay, here comes D minor. I'm going to play it here. G minor. Okay, and then again down to D minor, but I'll use open D minor, and then back to the top. Okay. Okay, so nice kind of a somber chord progression there to play with, but let's, let's do a little bit more to keep it interesting, okay? So I'm going to show you how to uh, enhance the chord progression uh, after the downbeat of every one of these chords, okay? So when you hear the... the the original guitar part that I laid down. Let's, let's play something in that little hole there. How about if we just take our finger technique that we've talked about before and just orchestrate a little arpeggio of the chords. So in other words, when the chord sounds like this, we're going to answer it like this. Just arpeggiate the chords. Okay, and all I'm doing there is just arpeggiating, in other words, playing the, the notes of the chord as a melody. So the chord comes down and then I answer it like this. Right? And that sounds kind of like a complementary part to the downbeat chord. Okay, so let's just try doing that. Take every one of these chords, don't play it on the downbeat. I've got that recorded. You answer by playing this. One. Three, four, one. One. One, two, three, four, one. One, two, three, one. Right? It doesn't even matter if you go or. The order of the notes is not as important as the placement of the notes. Okay? So one and two and three. One and two and three, four, one and two and three. Okay, when we get to the figure, we're just going to play that as it's written now. Okay, because that works pretty good there. Okay, on the A flat chord, why don't you try to add a little accent on the A flat chord instead of playing like that? We're going to change it. We're going to play an accent that's going to sound like this. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One. Okay, so that'll be a contrast to the other thing that I just showed you. Okay, so I'll, I'll play along with that and we're going to put it all together now. Here we go. One, two, three, four, one. Comes the accent part. Okay, 
Back to the top. Let's do that again. Bigger. One, two, three, four. Okay, accent part, here we go. Turn, you got it. Here we go. You're playing the arpeggios, right? Chord, here we go. the accents now, right? Okay, now I'm going to play along with you. I'm going to solo along with you this time, and you keep playing the chords. Here we go. Sounds good. I'm just going to take a little solo. So there you have it. A nice chord progression can be enhanced with just careful planning of a couple of guitar parts that fit really together nicely. And as you can hear, the simple strum at the beginning of the progression left a lot of room for an additional guitar part, which is your guitar part that I showed you. And that was simply just arpeggios after the downbeat, okay? so. Now that we're getting these different kinds of voices, voicings that we can play, we're going to also have different approaches we can take to our guitar rhythm parts. Okay, and that's, all, that's part of what uh, it takes to be a good rhythm guitar player, is to understand how to use your voicings and how to use different concepts to create uh, a great guitar track when you're recording or when you're playing in a band. Okay, I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.